video we want to look at the diagnosis, treatment, grief protocol and significance of uh, plumbism. Basically what plumbism is you have already seen in this last video. It's uh, nothing but chronic lead poisoning and uh, lead actually leads to forfirin synthesis suppression and suppression of carbohydrate metabolism. The symptoms you have seen in organic lead poisoning and uh, uh, inorganic lead poisoning and organic lead poisoning. Basically in inorganic lead poisoning A to Z all the symptoms you can write. So what and all are very specific here. Burton's line, basophilic stippling, right? All that is important. This is Burton's line because of lead sulfide. This is basophilic stippling because of uh, suppression and forfirin synthesis. Then other uh, specific things you saw were like uh, metaphyseal bands in x-ray, wrist drop, foot drop, etc. You saw a lot of CNS symptoms, right? Uh, and um, loss of libido, menstrual irregularities, infertility, right? All those symptoms you have seen. Diagnosis of plumbism. Here you can see, uh, you can check the hemoglobin concentration to know the anemia, peripheral uh, blood smear to see basophilic stapling, etc. Our RBC count will be less, reticulocyte count will be more. Then uh, you can check the blood level of uh, lead. You can check the urine level of blood. Sorry, lead. Urine level of uh, lead. You can check for uh, coproforfirin and aminolevulinic acid. So you can check the coproforfirin levels, right, in the urine. Urinary levels of lead, coproforfirin and aminolevulinic acid. Coproforfirin level in urine is very useful in screening. So let's remember that urine, coproforfirin, right, copro for firing okay the parameters for lead poisoning the blood level you should know normal level dangerous levels <clears throat> can you remember that okay look at this now what is this dot okay blood lead uh, this uh, normal itself blood in our normally blood will be there in uh, lead will be there in blood is it oh 25 to 40, I didn't know that. Urinary lead also is normal. Okay. So it is above some great value, it is dangerous. Urinary ALA also can be there. That is amino levulinic acid. Um, uh, urinary coproforfirin also can be there normally. So they are saying dangerous values are there. Okay. So basically, these are values if you want, you can remember. Actually, uh, in treatment, they have mentioned thiamine, magnesium sodium sulfate. Thiamine for neurological manifestations, magnesium sodium sulfate to change unabsorbed lead salts to highly soluble. So you can hasten the passage in stools so that I can understand. So you're giving some salts so that it can, lead salts can appear and uh, they can be excreted. I can understand that. Sodium carbonate, bicarbonate, right? Sodium bicarbonate. Then here they are mentioning diet poor in calcium. Okay, people, so let's continue with the, the specific treatment. Now, pay attention to the specific treatment. You'll give chelating agents, okay? So, the chelating agents will be calcium EDTA, calcium EDTA, calcium disodium versinate. Wow, EDTA, calcium disodium versinate. Excretion of lead as EDTA complex is raised by 50 times. Then you can also give British anti-levicide. So this is actually used in um, arsenic poisoning if you know British anti-levicide. Chelates lead both intracellularly and extracellularly by combining with one atom of lead for every two molecules of um, BAL to form a complex which is excreted in bile and urine. So calcium EDTA and British anti-levicide are the specific treatments. Okay. Now let's move on to this uh, GRAEF graph uh, protocol which is modified protocol for treating uh, plumbism, chronic lead poisoning. So if it's a severe acute poisoning then if there is encephalopathy and without encephalopathy what you should do. So basically let us look at what you should do if there is encephalopathy. You should give British anti-levicide, you should give this calcium uh, uh, EDTA, right? Calcium uh, uh, EDTA you should give, you should do a CT scan to rule out cerebral edema. You should uh, give diazepam or phenobarbital to control seizures. A lot of things are there very specific uh, you can do, okay. So you can look at the textbook for more information here. So uh, basically severe acute poisoning with encephalopathy, without encephalopathy, then moderate poisoning and then mild poisoning. Mild poisoning, they are saying if you give deep penicillamine, it should be enough. Deep penicillamine you give for what? Copper, right? Copper poisoning. 
Here they are saying you can give it for lead poisoning also. Okay. D penicillamine. So what is the significance of this topic? Why are we reading this topic? It is a very common uh, uh, poisoning they are saying in industries. Okay. That's all they have given here about plumbism. So guys, I uh, hope you have understood this video. D penis penicil amine. Okay, guys. So just remember all these words if possible, and uh, hope you will write something if they ask plumbers in the exam. Okay, that's all for now. Bye bye.